A recent Gallup poll revealed that America is the most stressed out nation on earth. In fact, research noted that this year Americans reported the highest level of stress, anger, and worry in over a decade. Stress is killing us, literally. Missed school and work, poor health, tense relationships, and the inability to sleep or relax has become the norm. 83% of people identify as being stressed. 83%. But 81% of those 83% of people who identify as being stressed, 81% of people do nothing to treat their symptoms or causes. Stress takes a toll on your body. It can lead to headaches, muscle tension or pain, chest pain, fatigue, a change in your sex drive, stomach problems, and sleep problems. Stress impacts your mood. It can lead to anxiety, restlessness, lack of motivation or focus, feeling overwhelmed, irritable, angry, sad, or depressed. And stress can impact your behavior as well. Overeating or undereating, angry outbursts, drug or alcohol misuse, tobacco use, social withdrawal, and exercising less often. All of these things have a direct correlation to us, and all of these have a direct correlation to stress. And maybe you're there. It might be work. It might be finances. It might be relationships. It might be a family dynamic. It might be all of those things combined. And it's just like, this will never end. I can't get ahead. And maybe you identify as being stressed. So maybe you try to cope. For some people, it's yoga and just the, just the soothing voice of the yoga instructor telling you to get into some animal-like poses just warms the soul. There's nothing as good as starting out a day with a little downward dog. Ah. Maybe it's a glass of wine or two or three or four. Maybe it's a hike to go out and to, to clear your mind. You just you go out and you enjoy nature and you get away from it all and, and you hike. Maybe it's a piece or a box or a package of chocolate. Maybe it's an adult coloring book. Yeah, those are real. An adult coloring book. There you go and, and you, you draw on a design and, and that warms your soul. Or maybe it's my favorite, sitting back on the sofa, kicking up your feet. Oh no, this is better than pizza. <laughs> and watching the happy afro of Bob Ross. Hello, I'm Bob Ross. Hello, I'm Bob Ross. Hello, I'm Bob Ross. I'm certainly glad you could join me today. It's a fantastic day here, and I hope it is wherever you If that doesn't bring relaxation into your life, <laughs> I'm not sure this series is going to be able to help you. But this is nothing new. This is nothing new. In fact, Jesus talked a lot about this. And one of the things we're going to look at today is in part of Jesus' most famous speech or sermon, whatever you want to call it, the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus talks about stress. And so if you have your Bible apps on your phones or your tablets, you can follow along there as we're going to dive into Matthew 6, and we're going to start at verse 25, where we read these words that Jesus spoke to the crowd who was listening to him. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? And so at the core of Jesus' message is this one word, relax. Relax. Stop worrying. We invite stress into our lives when we forget who's in control. When we forget who's in control, we invite stress. We literally open ourselves up. Every time we forget who's in control, we open ourselves up and just invite stress to come in and wreak havoc, not only in our bodies, but to wreak havoc in the part of us that is unseen, to strike us to the core and to riddle us and fill us and change our entire outlook. 
when we forget who's in control, we invite stress to reign and to rule. And every time we allow stress to rule and reign in our lives, it ends up in chaos. Every time. And in a culture that tells you to worry about everything. In a culture that tells you to worry about everything. Jesus' message is, relax. And this doesn't mean that you don't care about anything. It doesn't mean that you don't plan for anything. It doesn't mean that you don't have insurance on things. But what it does mean is keep it in perspective. I remember in seventh grade was, the, was one of the first times I really can remember feeling stressed out in my life. And, and I believe I've told some of you this story before. But it's not enough that you're in seventh grade and going through puberty and just at the most awkward time of your life. And if you're in middle school, listen, it will get better, I promise. I promise. It doesn't get worse than middle school, okay? If you're in like fifth grade and it's coming up, sorry. But once you get through middle school... Once you get through middle school, it only gets better. It only gets better. But I remember being in seventh grade. And, and so you're going through puberty and everything's, everything's a mess and there's all that. Just It's, it's not fun. And then the, the, we had a week-long emphasis on career week. And so they start showing you these videos about how you need to know exactly what you're going to do. And this was in the height of everybody needs to go to college where, where they really devalued the trade a, a industries. And so everybody had to go to college. And you had to know what your college major was going to be. And I just remember thinking, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I'm in middle school. What's, what's the matter? But I, I started to get really, really stressed out about that. And I was really worried, like, if I don't have this plan for my life by the time my paper's due on Friday, I'm going to amount to nothing. And you could argue I've still amounted to nothing. <laughs> but I finished the paper, and I talked to somebody who was a little bit older, and they told me, it doesn't matter what you write in that paper. You're probably going to change your mind a hundred times. And that's okay. It's all right. Their message, relax. This is the message that Jesus starts with. I tell you, don't be anxious about your life. You're like, don't be anxious about my life. Of course I'm going to be anxious about my life. What you'll eat or drink. Nor about your body. What you'll put on. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Relax. We invite stress into our lives when we forget who's in control. Jesus says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than these? Look at the birds of the air. Step one, if you want to relax, step one is check your outlook. Check your outlook. How much more value do you possess than the birds? And now there are some birds that you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm more important than, but man, those, those birds are pretty, like hummingbirds are incredible creatures. Incredible creatures. Canadian geese speed up when they're crossing the road already, all right? Like, they're ever. Let's just get rid of them. But, but Jesus' point here is check your outlook. Here are the birds of the air, and their needs, even Canadian geese, their needs are met. And how much more value do you have with God than the birds? How much more important are you to God? Than them. And yet they have their needs met. So if they have their needs met and you have more value to God than them, why worry? And again, we live in a culture that tells us all the time be worried, be worried, be prepared, worry about this scenario, and that scenario, and this scenario, and that scenario. 
And every day is an opportunity for you to go to bed worrying about something you didn't even know you had to worry about when you woke up that morning. Every day invites that opportunity. And the core message that Jesus has here is relax. Remember who's in control. Check your outlook. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? In fact, we have a lot of medical evidence now that shows us that anxiety shortens the lifespan and invites all kinds of physical problems into our life when we are riddled with anxiety, when we are anxious about everything. And so Jesus just says, what's the value in worry? Which of you by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life. What's the value? What good does it do? You've undoubtedly seen researchers suggest that 80 to 90 percent of what we worry about never pans out anyway. 80 to 90 percent of what we worry about never comes to fruition anyway. And yet, it can riddle us with anxiety. It can paralyze us from moving, and we allow it to become our focus, and we allow it to drain us of so much time and energy just being focused on those things. And Jesus says there is no value in it. It can't add a single hour to your life. So relax. And we're just going to confront something right now that causes a lot of stress and anxiety and panic in people. And we're just we're going to lay it out on the table and we're going to use this, this message of Jesus as a reminder to us. Because I am convinced at our core, if we are going to combat stress and if we're going to defeat stress, then we're going to have to have a healthy understanding of this fact. We're going to die. I don't mean to be fatalistic. And if right now you're suffering with a season of depression, please understand me. I'm not being fatalistic when I say that. I'm being realistic. I'm just telling you, nobody's making it out of here alive. And I am convinced that when we have a healthy understanding of that fact, that that is one of the one of the things that will free us up the most from allowing all these things that stress us out constantly to lose their grip of control. If we come to terms with the fact that we are not going to be on this planet forever, so much of what we worry about disappears. text her the other night and asked her if she'd go out on a date with me. She left her read receipt on. A day and a half later, she said no. Not me personally, okay? I'm using this as an example. I'm happily married. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a polygamist, all right? Just an example. And then when you get that no... And that can, that can shatter you just to the core. Like I, I put myself out there, and she turned me down. And if you allow that to become your focus, you, it just breaks you down. If you realize in 100 years you're both dead anyhow, find somebody who wants the dinner. You applied for a job, and you really wanted it, and they went with a different candidate. Well, apply yourself somewhere else, and oftentimes what you'll find out is that God has a way of working all these things out in a better way than you could ever imagine to begin with, but when we lose sight and when we put so much emphasis and focus into our day to day and we elevate it and that becomes all we think about, then it has the potential to just tear us at the core. And if 
if we're going to live lives with a healthy relationship with stress, what it requires us to do, and this is not easy, I understand that, but what it requires us to do is to zoom out. And to see the long-term picture. And why are you anxious about clothing, Jesus asks. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Jesus just says wildflowers are more striking in their presentation than the richest person in the history of the world. And guess what? That's just God's handiwork on display. That's just God having a little bit of fun. And here, here's the richest person in the world, and they go and they try to acquire all these things, and Jesus says it's nothing in comparison to what I can do for fun. Why are you worried? Why? There you go. You keep that in mind, you're going to be happy. But if God, but if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Question, how much more will God take care of you? How much more will God take care of you than the grass, than the wildflowers in the fields? How much more will God look out for you? Jesus says this as he's talking on, on a mountainside, and there's grass and there's flowers all around him. And the point is this. There are reminders everywhere we look. Everywhere we look, if we'll just remember to see them, there are reminders everywhere we look that God is in control, and God is greater than our circumstances, and God is bigger than me. Just remember to look. Open your eyes and see. Jesus says this, Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Stress comes from trying to do it on your own. Peace comes from putting it in God's hands. Stress comes from trying to do it on your own. And the problem is, many of us are gifted and we're talented and we have experience and God has wired us to be able to do a lot of things. And yet the downside to that is we begin to rely upon ourselves and we begin to diminish how much we rely upon God. And when there isn't the resilience upon God and we take those things into our own hands, once again, we open ourselves up and we invite stress to rule and to reign in our lives. And what we have to to do is remember that God is greater. Peace comes from placing things in God's hands instead of trying to do it all on our own. And then he says, the Gentiles seek after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them all. His point is that those who aren't even focused on God that's what they strive for. For those who aren't focused on God, they're constantly worried about all of the things that this life has to offer. They worry about them, but there should be a difference for those of us who follow God. For those of us who follow God, our lives should not be just filled 
and, and composed with nothing but fear and anxiety and stress. Instead, we need to live lives of freedom and understanding, being reminded that God is bigger than our circumstances, being reminded that if God takes care of the birds and if God takes care of the grass and if God plants wildflowers just to fun and we were created in God's image and he loves us so much that he desires to have a relationship with us that God has got our problems. He's got it. And it doesn't mean that you're going to love the solution, by the way. But it does mean you don't have to fear. And your life right now might be absolutely falling apart, and it feels like everything that once was normal is gone. And it's too much for you to bear. And I want you to know you're probably right. It is too much for you to bear. The good news is, for those of us who follow Jesus, we don't have to bear it on our own. Stress comes when we try to do it all on our own. And peace comes when we place it in God's hand. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Jesus says, here's what it looks like when people don't follow after me. They are constantly worried about what they're going to drink, what they're going to eat, what they're going to wear. They're constantly consumed with stress and worry and fear. But not so for those who have a relationship with me. And so as followers of Jesus, let's make sure that we're aiming for greater things. That we're aiming for greater things. So much of what causes us stress and anxiety, not everything, but so much of what causes us stress and anxiety are things that we're focusing on that we should never focus on and we should never worry about. And we've invited it into our lives because our priorities are wrong. And Jesus says, focus on what's really important. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first becoming more like Jesus. Make that your aim. Make that your focus. And the rest, God's got you. That isn't an invitation to be lazy. It isn't an invitation for inaction. It is an invitation for you to prioritize things and for you to place things in the proper perspective and for you to remember as you walk through life, God takes care of the birds. God takes care of the grass. How much more is God going to take care of you? When we focus on the proper things, we prioritize what really matters and we strip stress from its crippling power. We we no longer allow stress to have its crippling power over us. And stress loves it when it cripples us. But when we keep the proper perspective of things, we just destroy that. And so many things that seem like catastrophes and the grand scheme of things are no big deal. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Focus on today. And remember who controls it. Focus on today and remember who controls it. Remember, stress comes from trying to do it on your own. And peace comes from placing it in God's hands. And remember what matters. A few months ago, Conan O'Brien 
was reformatting his TBS show. For a long time, he'd been doing the late night show as it's been done for ages. An hour long format, start with a monologue, have a couple guests, end with a musical artist promoting an album that nobody buys anymore. And then that was the hour on TBS and not that many people were watching it, honestly. And so Conan decided it was time for them to, to shake things up and they got rid of the house band and they cut their format to a half hour and they've gone to just one guest. But in between the process of reformatting his show, he did an interview with the New York Times. That was incredible. And during that talk with the New York Times, Conan O'Brien shared a little bit about Calvin Coolidge. Now, unless you taught history, chances are you're not real familiar with the 30th president of the United States, Calvin Coolidge. There may be a random historian out there. You can call my bluff later and uh, give me a little history lesson. But as, as it goes, Calvin Coolidge was fairly popular as the 30th president of the United States. And as the 30th president of the United States, he had the opportunity to speak to thousands of people. He had the opportunity to impact policy. Anytime somebody's president, they're a big deal. And so was our 30th president who was president for six years. And there you see a picture of Calvin Coolidge addressing a crowd. And in the interview with the New York Times, Conan O'Brien talked a little bit about Calvin Coolidge. And then he said, I was in Vermont, and I went to his grave. He said, all our graves go unattended. All our graves go unattended. And the reporter looked at him. And Conan continued, I don't mean that in a fatalistic manner. It's just I understand that I could be sent up into, a, into space in a rocket, have it blow up, and two years from now, the question is, who's Conan? All our graves go unattended. And when we keep that in mind, it helps us not walk through life depressed or fatalistic. Instead, especially for those of us who follow Jesus, we don't have to walk through life depressed and fatalistic with this in mind. We can walk through life freely with this in mind, understanding there are far greater things that lie ahead than those we leave behind, as C.S. Lewis said. Why would we leave this world with any regret? And so the things that can paralyze us and hold us down and make us prisoner of whether or not she likes me and she's going to go out with me or whether or not I got the promotion or whether or not I got the raise that I think I was owed or whether or not we got the house we put an offer in or whether or not we got the car we really wanted or whether or not I have the best new wardrobe and here's what it looks like. All of those things things that we put so much time and energy and effort in trying to impress all the people around us and that just steals so much of our time and our energy and our joy. If we would just refuse to allow those things to turn us prisoner. we would instead remember that one day my grave will be unattended. So while I'm here,
while I can. I'm going to serve Jesus to the best of my ability. I'm going to love my family without apology. I'm going to pour into my kids. And if we would keep a proper perspective and just say, this body doesn't last forever, but my soul does. And worry about that. And focus on Jesus. And we can relax. So much of what this world throws at us just doesn't bother us anymore. This is where peace starts. where we stop trying to do it all on ourselves. We put it in God's hands. And we remember that so much of what steals our time and our energy and our focus is temporary. And we're going to zoom out and focus on that which really matters. We invite peace. God, I pray that you would help us help us relax. Help us remember that you've got us. And there are things far greater than what this world has to offer. So food and drink and clothing and all of the things, God, that can stress us out so easily, I pray that you would just help us keep in their proper place. And give us a proper perspective. Help us zoom out. And help us focus on what really matters. Do a work in our lives, we ask you, Jesus. Give us peace.